um, it encourages the separation of the UI from the work code-wise, which is always a good design pattern. MVC or MVVM are some common um, pattern folk kind of descriptions for those things. We did it before there were descriptions. Um, because of pervasive multi-threading, Haiku makes full use of your multi-core processor. <coughs> Don't you just hate seeing your expensive processor 50% idle, 25% idle? I do. B messages, which I've alluded to earlier, are used everywhere to communicate between threads. And creating one is, is literally a one-liner. Sending it is another one-liner. Drag and drop operates via B message. And I'll show you some, there's some interesting drag and drop things you can do. The settings are all saved as, B, as archived B messages. And archived B messages, if you remember back to replicates, a, a replicant is an archived B message. The kernel sends, sends messages. And they're extensible. They're, they're kind of bags of data. So you can put anything in there you want. Add-ons. There is an easy API to encourage you to make add-ons. Um, <coughs> the IM kit. I believe all of the IM implementations are add-ons. I'll show you some, some applications later that, that use add-ons as well. So why Haiku? You're sitting there saying, yeah, but I've got Windows 8, I've got OS X, I'm, I'm real happy. First of all, it is true open source. It is absolutely free. You're not looking at even 30 bucks every so often to upgrade like the Mac or 150 like Windows. It is, <coughs> it is MIT licensed. MIT license is, is, was my choice, and I think it was a particularly <coughs> good choice. Um, where the Free Software Foundation takes a stand against TiVoization, I think TiVoization is a wonderful thing. I believe that if I write open source software, you can use it for whatever you want, including putting it in a TiVo and locking it up. Because I always have the original, and I'm still willing to give it out. If I give him a $20 bill, it doesn't matter if he won't give anybody else a $20 bill, I'm still giving them out. That's my perspective. The MIT license allows others to embed Haiku and use it in more places. The more places it's used, the more traction it gains, the more developers we have, and everyone wins. It just works. Haiku is sort of unique. You don't ever have to do a ton of configuration work. If you install Haiku and it recognizes your device, it just starts up and is ready to go. If it doesn't recognize your device, it's just not there. They're, the configuration out of the box is good. Another feature that I consider pretty key, but it's, again, it's, you know, it's not on anybody's spec sheet. You can take a hard drive out of a Haiku box, put it in another machine, and it'll just work. Intel to AMD, doesn't matter. You know, NVIDIA to ATI, AMD, doesn't matter. The, if the driver is there, it'll start up. If it doesn't, if it isn't, it won't. It's not ultimately configurable, but we use the best defaults. We don't consider tweaky people to necessarily be our, our ultimate goal. Um, I always thought of this personally, although it was never a project goal, to make the operating system for my mom. I want something where when I go to use her computer, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm in Fisher Price land, but at the same time, I don't want to be fielding calls. What's this C colon thing? Because <laughs> that always devolved into a colon story. <laughs> Haiku is dedicated to the desktop. You won't see it on a server. You won't see it on your phone. You won't see it on a, on a camera or any of those other things, at least in the native install. You can, of course, do whatever you want with the source. But the focus is the desktop. That means from the kernel level, for example, we optimize for fast response. From the, from the UI level, we try to keep that responsive. We, it, it's all top to bottom for the desktop. It's a full and consistent operating system. It's not made of parts like, like for example, Linux or the BSDs. Those systems, you have the Linux kernel, you add on to that X Windows, you add on to that KDE, you add on to that ALSA, you add on to that, it, no. No assembly required, you download the image and you've got full OS. There's no DRM baked in. That means that your images, your files are yours. No one can take them away from you. It's not Unix. You may like that, you may not like that, but it is mostly POSIX. I'll show you in a minute. We've got a Bash shell, we've got awk, grep, sed, ls, all the good stuff. Um, I was a Linux or a Unix developer for many years, and I felt very comfortable in Haiku land. All the 
ease of a GUI with a full featured bash shell. And it's fast, even though it's hardware. Because we're not, we're focused on the desktop, and because we're focused on performance, it doesn't drag. Um, I've had reports even um, a month ago, somebody was taking copies of Haiku and installing it on 486s with 16 meg, not gig, meg of RAM for disabled veterans in the south somewhere. And I, I mean, that even stunned me. I was like, really? It runs on a 486? But there's no reason really why not. It's got the friendliest user community in the world. Now, one of the reasons for that is that we kind of drive out poisonous people. <laughs> we don't like miserable people. We don't like grumpy, complaining people. But if you have legitimate questions, you'll never get an RTFM, never, ever, ever, mostly because we haven't written a manual yet. <laughs> um, it is the friendliest, easiest community in the world to get along with, even when there's disappointment. Um, there's lots of opportunity. You know, if you're in the Windows world, how are you going to make your mark? What can you do that 900 people haven't done already? But in Haiku world, everybody is appreciative of any app because we just don't have enough. So let's do a demo. And before, after I do that, how can I get it? And there's our URL. Pause for a moment. Prestation identification. Anybody got it for it? Okay. Thank you. So let's do the demo. Oh, by the way, the whole demo so far has been in Haiku. So let's take a look at some applications. I know the first application everybody wants to see is the web browser, because, well, they're just so exciting. So this is, this is a live web page. Um, I'll tell you what, I don't have a prepared website, so anybody got a favorite? It's easy? Yeah, let's not go there. So, <laughs> Google works, all the other applications work. Actually, I've even used some pretty uh, intense JavaScript based uh, webmail with this, and it does work. It's got multiple tabs. What is your reported self doing to webmail? I'm sorry? How, what does it identify itself as a webmail? What's the user interface? Um, in this particular case, it identifies itself as an older version of Chrome. Because it is built off of WebKit. That's not a question I expected. <laughs> Let's see what else can I show you. I want to show you Wonder Brush. This was actually written by Steven Asmus, who was one of those German developers. I gotta tell you, I love the German developers because they, they're, you swear, you can see where the quality of like a BMW or Mercedes comes from. They will not ship anything until it's absolutely perfect. So Steven, or Stippy as he's known, made a, um, a drawing program. And I'll tell you, my drawing is only slightly better than my haikus. But it does indeed work, and it's got radius and hardness and all these things that I'm a geek, I don't really understand. But it, it zooms, and there's a set of add ons as well. But there are add ons for this, I'm aware of them. Um, sorry, you'll have to take my word for that one. I'm also running out of time. Let's see what else can I can show you. The mail tool, I said that. The only mail tool there is, is this. If you want to see mail, you go to your home directory. I don't have any. But you go to mail, there's queries, there's the inbox. There you go. That's how you manage your mail. And it actually works really well. There are mail clients that have been written. And the neat thing is, they don't, require, they don't use their own storage. All of the mail clients, except for one, and they went out of business. That, was ever, that were ever written for Haiku and BOS actually use um, the native format. So if you decide you don't like one mail program, you can use another. There's no import, there's no export, it just works. So, one of the, another one of those little detail things that, um, that, you know, again, it's not something you're going to say, oh, you know, I'm absolutely going to drop Windows for that. But style edit, which is our word processor, you can grab the text, drag it onto the desktop, copy paste. Uh, we review 
doing actually the whole presentation is in BPDF, which is our PDF viewer. Iconomatic. This is our, our vector, and again, I'm not going to disturb you with any of my drawings, but this is our vector drawing, our vector graphics tool, and it will actually export as, and it'll go to H, the HVIF R format. You can go to PNG, you can go to SVG, so you've got some options there. There is a media player. Unfortunately, I don't have any videos on here, but trust me, they can work. <laughs> Peaky is a text editor. People, people is actually kind of neat. This is our um, our contact management system. If you go and look at home, people, you'll see that there's a zero byte file. Why is that a zero byte file? because all of the metadata for the contact is actually stored on the file attributes of the file system. So it's a zero byte file that stores everything and you can query your people. I can show you a replicant. I would be glad to show you a replicant. Thank you for asking. <laughs> separate instances of the application, so you'll notice that while the curves are the same, they're a little bit out of sync, it's because it's actually sampling the processor at slightly different times. So, in fact, one of the neat things about replicates and, oh, another neat thing is we move fast. <laughs> You'll notice that the replicants come back up. And you can move them around. And you can right click. And remove the replicants. So I think, unless anybody has anything in particular, so you can draw that replicant now and say into a. Uh a uh, word processing document. An application that will support it, yes. In fact, I actually did a, a pretty cool, what I thought was a pretty cool test. I made a little replicate that draws a graph. In my case, it was a fixed graph because it wasn't really my interest. But I embedded it in a couple, in, in a <coughs> that had some um, an embedded text area, and I printed it, and it was almost a desktop publisher. I mean, you know, not, you're not going to replace publisher tomorrow, but it was <coughs> good enough for you know, an hour worth of coding. So I'm going to end there and actually just entertain any questions or do a little song and dance if you don't ask me a question. So <laughs> you better come up with something. <laughs> sure. Is your current relationship with the project still the lead maintainer? Like no. That? Okay. In fact, I was never actually lead maintainer. Screensaver was my big contribution code-wise. Um, <laughs> what I found was that I got all kinds of coding help and absolutely no organizational help. So I did, I was the uh, maintainer, um, and I had some real life things that came up, and I kind of left the project in 2007, and I'm actually not actively involved. This is the most likely work I've done in five years. Sure. Um, so the attributes thing, uh, I feel like that has a lot of potential inside of it, because um, there's like semantic web stuff that's really booming right now. Mm -hmm. You can standardize your attributes with that and integrate the two. So when you do queries, you can only do queries with the uh, computer attributes. You can do web attributes too, and it's, it's all the same thing. You can mix and match it together. I smell a contributor. <laughs> <laughs> you just got recruited. I think that's an excellent point to end it on. <laughs>